Why does China keep inventing fake experts? In this case, I'm talking about making up entire people. Here's the deal. Wilson Edwards, a Swiss biologist, got really angry at the USA and the WHO because they pushed for a new probe into the coronavirus origins, something that the Chinese government as well is very unhappy about. He posted on Facebook criticizing the WHO and the USA for wanting a second probe into the virus origins because the first time around they said it's extremely unlikely to have come from a lab leak. He said that they spared no efforts in rebuilding the U.S. influence in this organization in reference to the WHO and that the U.S. is so obsessed with attacking China on the origin tracing issue that it's reluctant to open its eyes to the data and findings. Okay, so some biologist from Switzerland doesn't want more probes into Wuhan in regards to the virus origin. Yeah, it's very suspect, but hey, fair enough. There's plenty of CCP sympathizers out there willing to do anything for that CCP money. But there's one big problem. The problem is Wilson Edwards doesn't exist. China made him up. And I gotta say, Wilson Edwards is the fakest name I've ever heard in my life. I mean, number one, I don't know anyone from Switzerland named Wilson, but number two, that literally sounds like, I don't know, something out of a Hallmark movie. It's, it's so fabricated, it hurts. It's a Christmas tale of two cities. Ready for the Christmas spirit competition? Oh, absolutely. Wilson Edwards and Trisha Helfer. That's right, he's not real. But you might wonder why? Well, the Chinese government is currently backed into a corner and they're doing what they do best, making shit up. While the world is looking into the actual origins of the coronavirus, it's making the Chinese government absolutely lose their minds because the truth is nearly out. The Chinese government's realized that the myriad of rumors that it has spread about the origins of COVID-19, blaming Italy and Australia and Japan and India, you name it. But the, at the end of the day, their best bet was to choose their most believable lie, Fort Detrick, or what they think is the most believable. They've created a wild and completely groundless story of a military lab leak in the USA hoping to dupe the world into looking away from Wuhan, the original epicenter of the outbreak, which was home to a bio lab that was working on manipulated, bat-derived coronaviruses. You see how insane that is when I say it out loud? We're supposed to believe that the lab working on the manipulation of coronaviruses from bats has nothing to do with a pandemic that sprung up from the city it was in. No, instead, when the CCP's back is against the wall, it has to create conspiracy theories that are somehow allowed on Western social media about a military lab in the USA. You're projecting much? The Chinese government often does this. They act just like a criminal running back to the scene of the crime. The thing is, they're pretty bad at covering their tracks. I mean, that's how people figured out this whole thing in the beginning, you know, with the lab leak theory. So anyway, they have to invent Western experts to further their agenda, to make it not only believable for their own populace, but for Westerners in general. That's how you get Wilson Edwards. This dude isn't real. His Facebook profile is new, he only has three friends, and yet this biologist is getting offended on behalf of the Chinese government that the WHO and the USA is calling for a second probe. He also makes posts in China saying how much safer the Chinese domestic COVID vaccine is compared to the Western developed ones. I love that Wilson's photo is exactly like the kind of person China chooses for its foreign experts. The picture they use for him is even used on other things, like on medicine, self-help products, uh, furniture. Home is the place where our minds can rest for a moment and where we can remember the happy memory during the years. Paint, fertilizer additives. Hell, we even found one on, hell, we even found him on Wikipedia for these fertilizer additives. He's a big deal. What a busy guy. I see why he has to change his signature all the time. He's probably got too many fans. For his own safety, he's, he's gotta keep him guessing, you know? 
They definitely chose him because he's got that wise European old man look they go for. If you've been to China, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's this like 65 year old, like white European old man look, usually with a mustache. It's definitely a look that they go for. Anyway, it's a shame he's not real. Poor Wilson, the lone voice in the void, is shouting at the top of his lungs against the evil West, but not a trace of his legacy to be found. I love his fake Twitter account that's followed by the Chinese Communist Party diplomat to Pakistan who harasses Muslim women to take off their hijabs. This same guy follows me on Twitter, by the way. You know you're doing the right thing when you have Chinese Communist Party members following you. Seriously though, please stop following me. You're a sex pest that harasses women of faith. Please, please go away. My favorite part of this is when the embassy of Switzerland in Beijing put out a call saying, Looking for Wilson Edwards, alleged biologist, cited in press and social media in China over the last several days. If you exist, we would like to meet you. But it's more likely that this is fake news, and we call on the Chinese press and netizens to take down the post. Number one, there is no registry of any Swiss citizen with the name of Wilson Edwards. Number two, there is no academic articles in the biology field cited under this name. And number three, the Facebook account cited as having published this commentary was only opened on the 24th of July, 2021, and has only posted this one post so far. It only has three friends, and it's likely that this Facebook account was not open for social networking purposes. Anyway, after journalists like BBC journalist Edward Lawrence and his colleagues figured out that Wilson probably wasn't real, it got me thinking, this isn't anything new. China literally does this all the time. For example, Lauren Beaumont was a journalist for state media, uh, the outlet CGTN, that the CCP created just to further its agenda to discount the Western allegations that there are concentration camps in Xinjiang. Lauren is very impressive. She has an art degree, a history degree, an archeology span degree, and also holds a degree in journalism. That is quite the spread, huh? She lived in Beijing for almost seven years and now lives in Xinjiang, Arumqi, with her family, very conveniently. Of course, she lives in the epicenter of all the allegations in Western China. Naturally, her contributions were about how everything about the Uyghurs and what the CCP is doing to them are lies. The thing is, her name doesn't appear on the registrar of the French government press commission. She would be on this if she had a degree in journalism. Her articles were shared out everywhere by Chinese state organs, and she was caught out, well, the fake person that the CCP created, was caught out when French people realized that she doesn't speak in a native French manner. We caught out the CCP live on our podcast when CGTN, the state media outlet from China, claimed that she was just using a pen name. And she, in fact, is a real journalist. But China's state spokeswoman said that she wasn't using an alias and that she, in fact, was real. Oops. To cap it off, the funniest part was that when someone made a Twitter account that was an obvious parody of Lauren not existing, I mean, people were just going ape about this. It was so funny because all the evidence pointed at them creating a fake journalist to further their propaganda for the Chinese government. But what happened was Qian He, which is the d director of the People's Daily, which is China's biggest state media newspaper in France, engaged with the fake parody account of Lauren. And they used it as proof that she was real. A true example of how a web of lies can spin out of control. You see Wilson, he's just Lauren 2.0. There's also other examples though. I mean, the CCP uses influencers to spout state propaganda and act as experts in medicine when they use them to tout a fake cure for COVID. Now I'm here today to tell you about Lianhua Qingwen capsules. They've also proven very effective to treat COVID-19. That in the treatment of COVID-19, symptoms are reduced by over 90%. And then they make up credentials for YouTubers saying that they're former journalists. And somehow these CCP shill accounts on YouTube are somehow experts on infrastructure projects or high-speed rails or agricultural yields or animal husbandry even political policy experts on the USA, despite some of them not having any ties to America. And the list goes on. 
these gigs, they used to be called white monkey gigs because in China, being a foreign face is enough to sell a product. I am Richard from England, European general agent of the Ginger Boss. And now they're being used for the state and its propaganda. These people are just Wilsons with an actual pulse. Yes, they're real people, but they're just regurgitating script of state propaganda, and they're acting as useful idiots for an authoritarian government. But it's not just government stuff, though. I remember when I was living in southern China, there was a, ironically, Swiss doctor plastered everywhere in flyers. Also, I saw him on local TV commercials. He was the face of a new clinic, and it was a plastic surgery clinic that, in the end, turned out to be using unlicensed equipment and injuring people, all while claiming that the person who set up the medical facility was, in fact, a famous doctor from Switzerland. Nope, it was just a stock photo. But you see, using a Westerner somehow gives credence to a message or a product in China, and that's pretty sad. In the private sector, companies in China use fake foreign experts for everything, from building projects to pharmaceutical patents. Daruchi is perhaps the most famous example of making someone up. He was just a kindergarten teacher in Shenzhen, and he allowed his photo to be taken for an alleged 10,000 RMB. They thought he had that wise old man look, so they made him the expert of orthopedic mattresses, and then was used in a massive international campaign to sell mattresses for the brand Darucci. You may have even seen him in your hometown. I mean, this is literally spread everywhere. I've tried to get in contact with him, but no one can seem to find him. Anyway, back to the man of the hour, Mr. Wilson Edwards. How do you think the Chinese government responded when the world found out that he wasn't real? Do you think they said, hey, we're sorry, that was just an error. Somebody made a fake profile to push some sort of narrative and we shouldn't have run with it. No, that would be the mature thing to do. The reason they didn't do that is because they wanted to do this on purpose. The Chinese government creates these people to push narratives that are in fact lies to serve the state and make sure that the world looks upon China favorably. That's what soft power is all about. Wilson Edwards was created as part of a nefarious campaign, one of thousands that China unleashes on the world to make you think that China is doing the right thing, when in fact, it's a brutal authoritarian government that treats its citizens like sheep. No, what China did at the end was say exactly what they said about Lauren, the fake French journalist. They said that it's unfair, and they demand apologies across the board from the evil, evil West because actually, Mr. Wilson Edwards is real, and he's just using a pen name. If you want the world to believe this nonsense, you guys are gonna have to come up with some better excuses. Anyway, the real takeaway from this is not just straight up humor, because it is hilarious, but also something much more sinister. Because if you really think about it, why does the Chinese government keep making these people up? Is the truth not good enough? Creating false experts not only damages their credibility, but most of all, basically acts as an admission of guilt. And with something like the origins of COVID, that is something they cannot afford to be guilty of.